Hello everyone and Madayo! Welcome to our art lesson series! Today we're gonna be talking about elements of art. The elements of art are the ingredients to a good artwork. Hello everyone, it's me again, Teacher Maita. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll be talking about art some more. Why? Because art is my passion. And I want to teach art to others via my YouTube channel. So if you are talking about arts, we have to talk about the basics. And elements is the first one. So elements is actually your building blocks of art. Just as all matter is made up of different elements, art is a combination of different elements or building blocks. Artists combine a line, shape, form, space, texture, value, and color to produce their work. These elements also help us appreciate, understand, and analyze works of art. So what are the seven elements of art? We're going to be talking about them one at a time. Don't worry, I'm going to give examples to help you guys understand. Number one is line. In art, lines aren't just straight or otherwise. They can also be abstract or implied line. It can be two or three dimensional. So line is the foundation of visual arts. Alrighty, so in this example over here, it is full of lines. Not just the obvious lines that diagonally cut across each color, but the contrasting color creates its own line because it contrasts each other. I'll give you more examples. Now we'll be talking about these paintings and artworks over and over again throughout the course of this video to help you guys understand. Alright, so let's first talk about uh, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. Now this mural was found in uh, an estate or a villa, hidden. It was actually hidden. And when they found this, they started to restore it and realized that they were restoring a hidden Da Vinci. So Da Vinci has a lot of lost paintings and they actually are worth a lot of money. This one is a painting that you cannot um, move around because it was paintly, painted directly on the wall. Now we can see that there is an obvious line here the table. It creates a line that actually divides the space, the third of the space down here because it's an empty space. And we will be talking about spaces later. Let's just talk about lines for now. So you have this line over here, but you also have an implied line. There are two um, or actually several implied lines in this painting. The most obvious ones are the ones uh, that kind of has a direct arrow. All of it painting to this guy over here, the center of the painting. So do you see it? There's this because this is a perspective painting. You could see that there's a line implied going here and then another one here. So it's like an arrow pointing down to Jesus. And then you have this implied line. Do you see it? It is using their body parts to create that sort of invisible line here. So everything is um, pointing to Jesus as the center and there are lines pointing right to him. Not to mention these, these guys, their hands pointing to Jesus. All right, let's talk about Starry Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. This composition was actually painted during his time in the asylum. Uh, there are several lines here from this line over here, these lines over here, and this implied line that the stars are kind of going to this direction, although we could see that stars don't really do that. But in van Gogh's imagination, it looks like they're swirling and going to this direction while this is going to this direction. So your eyes are drawn. Your eyes are drawn this way. Your eyes are drawn this way. 
So that's what line does. It gives you a direction to look. It pulls your eyes towards something. Now let's talk about sculpture. Michelangelo's Pieta. This sculpture is actually lifelike and life-size. You can even see the veins on Jesus' hands, the folds of fabric from Mary's clothing. What line do we see here? The diagonal one that Jesus does across Mary and the implied line that it's um, triangular. Some would say it symbolizes Trinity. See? Triangular. Same thing with this fashion photography down here. There is a line because of her body movement or body um, shape. So there's this line, this line, and this line. So she kind of forms a triangle. And we will be talking about shapes in a little bit. But in order for you to make shapes, you need to have lines. So you also have the triangular shape while Pieta also does that triangular shape. All right, let's move on to the next. Space. Space is based on where and how the artist implies all other elements of art in their work. Space allows artists to set the foreground, middle ground, and background for their painting. Space will ultimately lead to depth, but at the moment, let's think about placement space as placement so look at these two um, boats here where are they placed they are placed not at the edge here not up here but somewhere a third of the way up there you could also see that there are lines see th this supposed to um, break the horizon and up there into the horizon of the sea so with space you could see mm, these two are close to each other, but not quite. They're not further out into the ocean, but not quite kissing the harbor. So that is how space works. All right. All right okay. We will talk about uh, Last Supper again. In this space, you have... Um, I don't know who's who in this, but... They're supposed to be the 12 apostles. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then another one, two, three, four, five, six. Jesus being the 13th person in this painting, and he's the one in the center. So his placement is in the center because he is the most important one in this supper. Then you have um, everybody else here. Um, these guys seem to be arguing. These guys seem to want to talk to him. These guys are, I don't know, gossiping or something. But each placement um, is deliberate by um, Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci. Um, I don't know who's who here, but there are a lot of speculations such that uh, this person might be Mary Magdalene and Judas is the one who's um, not in this painting. So... Those are a lot of um, things that they're doing or speculating. We'll never know. Next. It is supposed to be Last Supper, but do you see the placement of the windows at the back? It's quite daytime. <laughs> so, yeah. And this scene, of course, um, it's not very Jewish, the scene. It's actually very European. Even the faces of um, everybody here. Everybody is Caucasian, and they're not Middle Eastern, which um, Jesus and his 12 apostles should be. So, yeah, you can just put that uh, in your mind that this is the artist's rendition. Because I don't know if Mr. Da Vinci has ever met a Middle Eastern person before or not. So all he has is his imagination, and unfortunately, a lot of other artists copied him on what Jesus is supposed to look like. So how many hundred years later, we have so many white Jesuses, but you know, that's, um, that's artist rendition for you. Okay, now let's talk about the space here in Starry Night. You have a painting full of dots and dashes reminiscent of the Impressionist era, which is 
where Vincent van Gogh is. So this is an Impressionist painting. He's using a lot of impasto though, so these are very uh, thick lines. Mm, unlike um, Monet or Manet, which has a finer, thinner dots and lines compared to Van Gogh's very thick and uh, some would characterize this as aggressive. Now, the placement of the stars, um, some would say, is this even a constellation? This is more of his imagination. Um, they actually have proven that this is based on a constellation. Of course, it's not this big. Um, Mr. Van Gogh just made it bigger, of course. <laughs> the placement of the cypress tree. It's dominating the whole scene. It's practically in the foreground. And the um, hills behind is your background as well as the starscape. All right. Now, if you ask Teacher Maita, how would space affect uh, sculpture? You know, how, how, would you, how would you say like um, space? Because the sculpture is the space itself. Yes, and let me tell you guys about negative space. So negative space is also um, a thing uh, in the art world. It is deliberately not placing things in that space. Ever wonder why, like this one, this photography, there is nothing behind her, there is nothing around her. It's really just her. That is deliberate. That is deliberate to call attention to this person. Same with Pieta. There isn't any other sculpture or little um, elements in this except Mary and Jesus. So the placement, every little placement here is very deliberate by Michelangelo. So you could see each and every veins in his hands, um, clothing wise, uh, a lot of folds there, how she places her hands, how she is cradling her son. Her expression, very solemn, and her hands, it's like an alms or offering. So there is uh, the placement. Each and every placement of the elements tell you the space. And uh, this is actually a, a big sculpture. It was not finished in a day. I don't think it was even finished in a year. So it took a while to create this with Michelangelo and his team to make this very, very realistic uh, statue out of marble. All right, let's talk about texture. So texture connects with the sense of touch. But teacher Maida, what about artworks that can't be touched? Well, the artist uses texture to show you how it's supposed to look or how it's supposed to feel. Like in this abstract art, it looks so bubbly, doesn't it? But I'm sure it's quite flat. And this looks like um, sea foam. And this kind of looks like lava. Is it actually? No, it isn't. So let's go back to these four artwork. Let's talk about the texture. So in this texture, we could see hmm, the table. Looks like it's linen. You could see like flat stone walls at the back, a very textured ceiling, which is, as I said, not very Jewish architecture, but well, this one is uh, Leonardo da Vinci's imagination, of course. And you could see the lintel piece on the windows. They're quite ornate and they are textured. Look at the table. They have bread all over it. And if you look at it, because the mimicking of the texture is bread, we are able to recognize it as bread. We're able to recognize hair as hair. We're able to recognize fabric as fabric. That is texture. That is how texture work. So let's go to Starry Night, which is heavily textured. Vincent van Gogh uses impasto, very thick paints to create this effect. It is very thick. Um, if you have seen the actual one, it is quite thick. Most of his paintings are like that. It's really a thick dollop of paint, which he layered over and over again to create this effect. Um, yeah, it looks grainy, but that's how he intended it to be. And 
this is in his of course imagination how stars look like how actually because of the texture it looks like it has movement or uh, well of course some would say that's just optical illusion yes that is that is and precisely because of the texture you get that okay so what about in michelangelo's pieta what is the texture here it's smooth solid marble yes it is and as i said if you look closely if you can download a picture of pieta and look very closely at uh, jesus's hands you will see veins actual human veins like popping out veins so it shows that he's clearly um was in pain because his veins are popping out you can see uh, wounds he actually makes wounds uh, for Jesus here in this um, sculpture the texture of the marble is smooth but he's able to carve um, fabric and it looks like falling fabric in it so it it's very texture is carved into marble so let's talk about this fashion photography it is photography it's not a painting but because of lighting effects and of course the the material choice of what she's wearing we could see that this sweater that she's wearing is a knitted sweater and the pants that she's wearing is smooth uh khaki khaki one and the shoes that she's wearing because of the shine we're able to see is leather so those are the different textures that we can see now we're halfway there with color color has three elements of its own hue value and intensity we'll talk about value later colors can hold emotion the meaning of an artwork drastically changes by playing around with these elements i should know because i do teach therapeutic arts and color does play a very big role like most of the color most of the um elements of an artwork will be dominated by color because colors hold emotion all right so let's go back here look at these colors look at everybody's colors pink yellow green blues except for jesus jesus is wearing red and blue why is he the only one wearing these two colors so well, there are some who are also wearing blue, but they're speculating that Jesus is blue is royal blue, and he's the only one wearing red. Red symbolizes royalty, and this deep royal blue can only be um, obtained for royalty. So they are, or let's just say Mr. Da Vinci is trying to say that Jesus is king he is wearing royal colors red and blue everybody else is wearing muted because they cannot compare to jesus um yeah so we will also show contrast of colors here like this uh, wall is dark so that jesus here is very highlighted um we'll go here to our starry night look at the colors yes blue is very dominating but as you can see yellow is also everywhere he is inserting the color of yellow every little tinge in this painting because the uh, starscape and the moon is supposed to have illuminated the uh, fields illuminated the cypress tree and illuminated the town so yeah you could see yellow all around now for the purpose of this i made the pieta here black and white because it really doesn't have color it's marble it's white there is no color other than the marble so mr michelangelo uh, actually chose white marble to do this sculpture i made this black and white so you wouldn't look at the the tiles behind it because it's not relevant to this discussion how can you say color here was the color white even a choice yes well the color white is really a choice but where can you find color here he actually plays around with the shadow so 
when he was commissioned by the Vatican to create this sculpture, he made sure it is so textured, remember we talked about texture, so that it catches light. So the black and white here and the intensity of the shadows is actually very dramatic and very deliberate. Okay, so all right. Now let's talk about this artwork, this photography over here. So this is actually, in the fashion term, very muted. Muted because there is no intense color. There is no um, other hues than warm hues. So you have light khaki, gray hair, cream sweater, cream uh, leather shoes. So there is no intense colors in this photo value so this kind of connects with color so remember color has three elements of its own hue which is the color itself value which we're going to be talking about now and intensity how intense is the color how blue is the blue how green is the green how pink is so hot all right so in connection with color value determines how light or how dark the color is used in art. So the lightest value of color is white and the darkest value is black. So in this photography over here, you can see a lot of um, black and white. So the white comes from sunlight coursing through the ceiling, the glass ceiling, giving this texture that the photographer has captured. We'll go back to our four artworks so I can explain more what value is. Remember how uh, we talked about colors here that Jesus has royal colors. So everybody else is muted, which means the value of their colors is lower. In other words, Mr. Da Vinci mixed a lot of white with the colors to achieve this color, but he didn't mix so much with Jesus giving him the brightest and most intense color because that is how he intended it. The, the table over here is white, so it has the lowest value, which makes everything brighter. Uh, why is that? Actually, that's also deliberate. This table here is actually symbolizing an altar, and usually what altars are they are in the color of white, especially for Catholics and Christians. White is altar. Okay, so here. Which one has lower value and highest value? So highest value will be dark scale. You have your cypress tree. It is dark. It is black. It's essentially black and um, brown or red. And the rest is of blue tones. And you have your stars, which has uh, lower value tones, which creates these light colors. Pieta does not have color, so I purposefully left it black and white because I don't want you to look at the color of the tiles behind it. How will you see the value in this artwork? Uh, as I said in the previous slides, Michelangelo uses the intensity of shadows to create the texture, to create the value, and to create the intensity, very black and white. There is no color aside from white, but everything else is played through the shadow. The texture comes out, the details come out, everything comes out. So that was really done on purpose. For this uh, last painting, or sorry, photography over here, she is very uh, muted. In other words, a lot of white tones were added to her, or should I say, she is full of lighter value tones. So you do have the darker value tones of the background so that she is highlighted as the least value tone, making her pop out. Shape. Sh 
shape is the product of closed lines. Remember we talked about lines. So you could see here there are a lot of lines in this abstract painting and a lot of lines in this painting as well. Now when they close together, they form a shape. These are two-dimensional and they convey the height and the width. So because this is uh, very abstract, you are having a hard time seeing the height and width. But you can see the shape. You see this triangle here, you see this square here, you see this rectangle here, another triangle here. So this is all full of shapes created by these textures and the lines that are both literal and implied. As for this one down here, uh, you can see it's, it does have a lot of shapes. The house itself has a lot of shapes. Triangles, rectangles, squares to create this house. That is the shape. Let's go back to the Last Supper. Do you see a lot of shapes here? There are a lot of obvious shapes. A lot of squares in the ceiling, a lot of rectangles in the wall, the rectangles in the um, windows. And also an implied shape. So Jesus actually is creating this triangle here. Denoting the triangle such as the Trinity. So here you go. Here in uh, Starry Starry Night, we have a lot of shapes. All of the stars are circular. The moon is circular. Triangles down there for the village and you could actually say that the cypress tree also forms a triangle in fact this forms a triangle so these are full of shapes pieta for forms a triangle this photography forms a triangle even her legs here forms a triangle and her, her arms here, the negative space here, forms a triangle as well. In fact, this is also implied. See this indentation here? Her hands there, this also forms a negative space of a triangle. So you could say that her pose is very angular. Now let's talk about form. When a shape acquires depth, so you have an x-plane, a y-plane, and now you have a z-plane, which creates depth. Then it has form. So example to this is when you have a circle and it has depth, it transforms into a sphere. So look at these. I know they're just random paintings of um, leaves. I think these are begonias. I'm not quite sure what you call these leaves. But you could see there's depth. There's something behind it. It's not just everything all in one layer you can see layers. So forms will help you create or perceive layers. Okay, so what forms are we uh, talking about here? Jesus is actually not flat. You could see he's not flat. Why? Because you could see that his table, uh, his hand is on the table. So he's not like flat in the back. There is depth to him. He is not just a, a piece of triangle here. He has depth here. His hands are here. His head and the rest of his body is behind the table. Everyone is the same. Most of their hands are at table level, but behind they are behind that. In fact, some apostles are behind other apostles. Like, this guy's behind, this guy's behind, this and this. They're behind, this guy's behind these two. So there is depth achieved here. Same thing with here. There is your foreground, which is the cypress tree. Your midground, which is supposed to be the village. And then your background, which is the hills. And even further behind it. So there comes like a fourth uh, layer behind it, which is the starscape. With uh, Pieta, there's no doubt about it. The depth of this is um, very um, intense because she is, or or um, shall we say Mary, is in a shape of a chair cradling Jesus. You can't get more depth than that. So her, her shape, triangular as it is, 
also has form, which is like very, um, it's a very complicated form. It's not just a flat form anymore. It has depth. Even this photography over here, she is not flat. She is not squished into the back. You can see her arm is in front. Her leg, this leg and this leg is in front. Only her torso and head is at the back. She creates depth. Now, if, if she had a different pose, perhaps you could say her pose was very flat. But now her form is actually complicated because of the different depths that she is creating all on her own. Unlike Last Supper, you have a lot of them creating different depths. Some are behind, some are in front. This one, that's just one person showing what's behind and in front. Now let's put things into practice. I want you guys to spot the line, space, texture, color, value, shape, and form with me. So let's talk about Starry Night and Wheatfield. These are both by Vincent Van Gogh. So we talked about Starry Night. We, I showed you which one is line, space, texture, color, value, shape, and form. We are going to look for that here in the wheat field. I don't know about you, but these two just juxtaposed to each other actually has a lot of similarities. Yes, it also has a lot of differences, but take a look here. It too has a cypress tree, although it's not in the same side. It's on the other side. It's not in the foreground. It is in the background instead. Your rolling hills are still there and your clouds is there very different from your starscape. Yes, I know. And there is no, um, what's this, uh, village. You have the wheat field here instead. But if you look at what makes this very, um, Van Gogh, it's actually to do with a lot from texture, color, the value, the form of it, the space, how Van Gogh composes it, it's all very him. So, all right, let's talk about line. We've seen how much lines there are in this. You can also see those lines doing the same. See this line, this line, this line. In fact, this has line. The shape, the shape, the shape. Same. So we don't have the starscape because this one is daytime, but you have clouds instead. He makes the same texture, layering a lot of paint in the Impressionist style to create these. In fact, he does the same, of course, here. So you could clearly see that. See? Very, very thick. So the forms, you could see the depth. So you could see the wheat field is really here in front. The cypress tree in the back, which is different from here where the cypress tree is the one in front. Let's move on to the next one. So these are not quite Piet Mondrian's um, artworks, but they are inspired by uh, the series of uh, abstracts. So he doesn't really have any names to most of these. He just calls it abstract or composition number two, composition number three, composition number whatever number. And it's just uh, the modern critics who are calling it windows because it looks like windows it's not it's he just calls them abstract so Piet Mondrian was known for doing these he has a lot of others of course with forms and with humans and other composition but in his late life when he started to create these abstract people saw them and found them wow this is something so new something that has not been done before in the uh, art world so a lot of people actually liked it. Now, there are a lot of obvious lines here. For, for Piet Mondrian, this is like a slap of lines. A lot of lines. And because of those lines, you're able to form shape. See a lot of um, tri uh, sorry, not triangles, rectangles and squares. And he filled those up with color creating some sort of texture so this is more the textured type this is less so that's why people keep calling it windows because of 
It's lack of texture. It's, it looks like a stained glass window. But this one, and he has a lot of um, artworks that are like this. They do create the texture. He has one about the subway. And it is very textured. And if you blur your vision a little bit, you can really see, hey, it does remind me of the subway. Alright, so the spaces, you can see that there are spaces. The negative space, he left blank, he left white. Adds to the drama or adds to this window effect, we will never know because he never explained his composition. The thick black lines actually gives us this texture that is very, um, very Piet Mondrian. Now, how about form? It does not have depth. This has depth. This does not have depth. But that's what makes it his artwork. And somehow it works. So I hope you understood the lesson. Let me know if you did or let me know if you didn't. I will try to explain it in a different way. Perhaps if I redo the series next year. So you can rewatch the video if you like. And if you have suggestions for other videos, just let me know. Thanks so much, and the sources will be at the uh, comment section down below. Thanks, guys!